and Serving with Eyes Wide Open by David Livermore. We cover chapter two and three, and this is chapter two that we are going to be sharing about. So chapter two talks about the rapid growth of the church throughout the world. Um, it just talks about everything church, how it's ha what's going on with it, where it's spreading the most, and all the Christians around the world. Um, there was a rapid growth around the church throughout the world, and Christians, more and more Christians are becoming more prominent everywhere. Uh, persecutions of Christians every day around the world are happening, um, and a lot of people don't even know that they're happening right in their own backyard. Something I found interesting from this chapter was that Christian families in Sudan, the young boys are kidnapped in the middle of the night from their homes and their Christian parents, and they're taken to something called religious confirmation camps, I think, but they, um, they're taken from their families and conformed to what their country wants them to believe. Um, yeah, just to go along with that, I think it's um, kind of an American culture. We live day by day in America, just playing out our own culture, not realizing that if we stay set foot in other countries and other cultures, there's actually that happening more often than we could even think or imagine that. They're taking these young boys and putting them into militaries or in Africa, they're uh, making boys at the ages of 10 go in and their tribes and um, joining the little, uh, their uh, tribe that goes in and like kills all these men and women, at, especially the young boys and young women. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people join church and Christianity just for the, the mere sake of community. Yep. They really want a family that way due to past things that have happened. They just want to be surrounded with people, and that's part of the growing rate of Christians. Yeah. Uh, Christians face a lot of spiritual warfare in the universe yep. that we have to be very aware about. And the book talks about all the different types of spiritual warfare that we'll face. Um, there's a growing fight against Christians that we don't see, but it's happening in something called the spiritual universe that the book talks about. Um there's also, which kind of gives a little hint into chapter three about the missionaries that are going, growing and they're going everywhere around the world. There's something called the Back to Jerusalem movement, which is among the Chinese churches. I thought this was really interesting because it's a proclamation of the gospel from China to Jerusalem. These people are traveling between the two and they're hitting cities that are primarily Islam, Hindu, Hinduism, and Buddhist. A lot of communities that they try and conform to Christianity are that religion already. Finally, chapter two summarizes everything with a cry for help for leaders. There are so many leaders that are wanted in the church and many people don't know that there's not any tools in the Western countries for training leaders. One thing I found interesting was 80% of the churches are led by men in other countries because women don't have the training or the ministry opportunities that we have here in America. And so for just a little bit of leaders going out there and just helping can do a lot. On top of that, I think it's um, kind of a, an assumption that women get discouraged that they are women mm -hmm. and so they feel like they're not led to lead in the church when... I don't necessarily find that true in, in by any means. So I think, um, especially in other cultures that degrade women and their abilities, the men talking down, like, oh, the woman's not supposed to get on stage and preach, when a lot of cases it's the women making the most difference in some little communities. Yeah, for sure. So in chapter three, David Livermore was talking about missions and the motivation behind missions, um, in particular short-term uh, missions. Uh, what some people have to say about the short-term missions was it's biblical. Um, it's also adventurous, and, uh, you know, people say it'll change your life. Um, one of the statements uh, of it being biblical, it says God has commanded them to go. Um, uh, with that, also, it's adventurous. A lot of times, people will go on missions as a more of a vacation-type setting. It's like, oh, let's go visit places. Um, let's just adventure the world and say, okay, but... As a side note, we'll do missions when it should be the other way around that we should be going for the missions. And if there's time to enjoy the scenery, do that as well. Um, and then also, in it's, it, 
he talks about how it'll change your life. And one of the things he says is that um, a lot of people who go, um, it says many believe short-term effects only come with not who are here, right? That's what they're saying. Um, Basically, yeah. they're saying that the people who go on the missions, it's not they're not changing the lives of the people who are there. They're going for their own selfish reasons for personal change right. within them. They, Livermore talked about how you can't, you can't go and actually make a difference for a short-term time. To make a difference on the people there, you have to stay for a long period of time. Therefore, short-term missions are not necessary. They aren't needed. It's really only going to be beneficial if you're there for a longer period of time. Yeah, and some of the research uh, shows and um, that they like question if what the long-term and short-term effect is on um, long-term versus short-term missions and how it affects the people they're reaching and if it's even affecting people that are going to do that reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, with the adventure, there's even so many organizations that advertise for short-term missions that are saying that it's going to be a fun missions trip, that even though we're reaching out and we're helping the city, we're also going to have plenty of time for shopping and going to the beach and experiencing new food. And Livermore was stating that that's not the purpose of short-term missions trips, and a lot of people have the intention behind going on them just for that reason. And they're like, oh, missions, oh well, people will donate to me. And it'll be a free vacation. But. Right. They're, it's almost like they're pulling people, they're baiting people to go on missions. Yeah. For their own intentions. Like, hey, come on missions, it's fun. And so people, you're automatically saying, I'm going on a missions trip because it's fun. Yeah. And you totally forget the aspect of, no, we need you to help serve Jesus and spread the gospel. So right off the initiative of doing the donations and trying to get people on, you're already setting the wrong motive and wrong goal. And so that translates to people that are going because... Um, I wouldn't say everybody that goes on a missions trip has a motive of, oh, I'm just having fun, but I don't think it um, sets it all up for success on short-term short missions. Absolutely. Yeah. But that was Chapter 3 and what he talked about.